morning you guys welcome back to southern latitudes and um i'm robin and i had a request for what was i planting when and so i thought we would address that today it's rather cold we just had that storm over the last couple days and um so that you know i'm really not in the mood to be out there exactly right now we had two inches of rain that was fantastic uh so i don't even have to water this morning okay so let's get into this we have a lot of stuff to cover i'm going to try to make it kind of fast so it doesn't turn out to be the longest video you ever watched on seeds so my favorite tool when garden planning um if you've already seen some of my garden tours you've already seen that uh, i have a lot of beds completely full i have all my winter brassicas uh, that have been planted that is things like brussels sprouts broccoli cauliflower cabbages um, all of my lettuces, all my greens, my cows, those are already in the beds and established and we're eating off of uh, a good bit. I should be pro picking my first broccoli this week. Uh, I don't think the cauliflower heads are starting yet, but they're starting to fold over. Um, I was a little late to the party because if you know, you know, you know that I had trouble with rodents and had to restart, restart, restart. <clears throat> so, um, I also have tomatoes and I have peppers and I have onions already in the ground. Um, that was just sort of trialing for fun. We usually get some tomatoes in winter, but we've had such a mild winter in Florida that I've had tremendous success with my tomatoes already. And um, we're not canning them, but we're eating fresh pretty much on a daily basis. Uh, the peppers, you know, just a one or two a week, you know, and that's pretty good really for peppers. I didn't expect them to perform like that. Uh, the onions are great. I have plethora. I have 10, 15 Y's and I have red Creole and um, they're all getting pretty thick and the plethora are already starting to bulb, which is a surprise to me. And, um, and we'll talk a little bit more about those. And then the permaculture is a whole different video. So anyhow, the favorite tool that I have is Clyde's Garden Planner. Now, uh, it has a sliding, let's see if I can make this slide. It has a sliding tool, and you just put the line where your last spring frost is. Now, if you're in zone 9B like me, and Kelly asked me this question on the comments a few videos ago, um, the the line only goes as far back as february february 8th and so i just use that as my start date it can be january 30th it can be february 28th but that's a, just a good general rule where to start it has all sorts of things onions peas spinach cabbage cauliflower radishes turnips beets potatoes broccoli lettuce and so forth all the way down and it will tell you exactly when to direct sow and when to indoor plants start, start your plants indoor. That's a better way of saying it. It also will give you companion plants on there. So you can pick these up. I think they're $6 or less if the inflation hasn't got them. Um, you can find them all over Amazon. A lot of your big YouTubers have their version of this. Um, as you can see, mine's a four, uh, as you can see, mine is a Shamrocks. So I think this came from like a 4-H group. It was a gift, so I don't really know and I'm not going to pry. But um, like I said, other big YouTubers have their own version of it with usually their logo on the bottom. This is my greatest guide. So, um, so what am I going to plant? What am I going to start? Well, I'm still going to start everything personally for myself. I'm in zone 9B, East Central Florida. So if you're in 9B and you're more inland and you're near Orlando, if you're like on the, the West Coast, like Tampa and cities around there, you will probably want to be more mindful of the frost. I have a fantastic benefit of being over here on East Central. That's why I always specify I'm East Central because I have the benefit of the ocean keeping my temperatures just a couple degrees warmer than anything inland, like in Orlando and, and around that area, Ocala, whatever. 
I if, say they're freezing. I may be 37, you know, so we can get away with a lot more if you're in the Brevard County, Volusia County, Indian River County area. And that's wonderful. Uh, as you may see, I'm in the shed today and I did bring in my peppercorn plants, my babies, uh, the pineapples just because it was in the same pot. Uh, I brought in the baby Dr. Weishi, uh, or Weish, um yellow tomatoes just because they're still tender. They're still in a little bit of transplant shock. They're not very happy, but everything else stayed out last night. I see that we went to at least 42 degrees, if not 41, and everything is fine out there. I've walked the whole yard probably twice already. Okay, so let's go on with seeds. Oh, also I wanted to make a quick mention that um, if you wanted to be more organized than this and say you wanted to keep yearly records digitally or something, I had a great recommendation from Heavenly Acres, Tennessee, and Nicole did a whole video about Better Hens and Garden website, and you can do a whole lot of garden planning that way. You can map things out, layout, you can um, keep spreadsheets if that's your thing. You can do lots of spreadsheets of when you started, when, you know, if it worked for you, notes, whatever. That's another great tool you can have in your toolbox. All right, so let's get at it. Let's talk about different varieties uh, in no particular order. Um, let's start with corn. I am not growing corn this year because you need a lot of space for corn. And I've done small plots. I've done um, golden bantam. I've done peaches and cream, fall, spring, over winter. Um, I just get okay pollination, not great. Sometimes I don't even get good. Sometimes I get weird corn. So I am just going down to Immokalee in the spring and buying their corn because they have acres and acres of corn to pollinate and they get way better germination. I can't really do it in a suburban garden setting. And um, good luck if you do it, uh, but it's not worth my space. I can grow other things more successfully than corn. Potatoes. I actually am going to do potatoes, but I'm not sure when. You would be um, either having them done or close to, you can do it now, you know, or soon. Um, a lot of people uh, in zones eight, they try to do it about Valentine's Day, if the weather permits or whatever. I'm going to skip it this year, uh, only at least for now, until we get the shed pulled out. Not this shed but the shed next door is coming down and we're gonna make that a potato bed. Half of it will be um, like Red New Orleans and Golden Yukon. I like those varieties a lot. And the other side will be sweet potatoes. Um, I don't know where, what varieties to get for sweet potato. I've always just had a friend give me one or one from the grocery store. So if you have uh, any recommendations on sweet potatoes, I'll do that when the time allows. Summer squash. Okay, so we have different categories in there. For the yellow squash, my favorite variety is Zephyr, which is half yellow, half green. And uh, we just find it works really well for us. Uh, I do like the yellow crooked necks and so forth. Um, but pretty much we settled on Zephyr and that came out of Johnny Seeds. And that's usually just what I, it's my go-to, you know. Um, for zucchini, we don't do it too often. I did it last year and I used Ford Hook uh, seeds and they were wonderful and it tastes great. And so we're gonna probably do that again this spring. Um, also for timing of that, March. March is my favorite month. Uh, I just direct sow right into the ground March 1st or as close as I can to that date. And I also do cucumbers then too. Okay, the third um, summer squash that I love to do are patty pans. And that is a huge family request that I get. And so my favorite there are Golden Marbury Scalloped Edge. Love it. That is probably my favorite of all squashes. My second favorite squash is Benning's Green Tint, which has a little bit more of a citrus note to it. Um, I have done other squash. I've done caserta. I've done uh, 
the round ones and uh, they're good i just don't get the production out of them that i get out of some of these others everything's good if you have space and whatever go ahead and experiment i have just noticed that this gives me production for the small space that i have and um we did a taste test on squash one year and these patty pans were it they were the top two out of the four we tried cucumbers we had a great year last year for cucumbers. Um, I had tried Boston pickling and maybe even um, one of those other picklings and didn't do so good. Years passed, so don't give up. Last year, we moved them over here into the full sun in March. They went bonkers. Uh, we had, I was giving them away. I had Fred merrily over to come pickle with me one day. We couldn't eat them and can them fast enough. The Boston pickling was wonderful. And then we had market more for slicing and putting into the salads. Um, I used to do Socrates, which um, was one of those, uh, it only throws female blooms and you don't really need any pollination. The seed cost on those, um, I don't know what it is this year, but I know it was like $16 for a packet. Uh, the last time I bought them, probably a couple of years ago. And I said, I don't need them that badly. Uh, we used them initially because when we started here, we didn't have the pollinators. And um, I really needed to build, you know, in the memory of the bees, where to come for the food and the pollination and stuff. And now that I have that established, we're great on cucumbers. I don't have to, and as squash and pumpkins and everything. I don't have to pollinate by hand anymore. And uh, I don't have to buy expensive seeds like this that are really meant for greenhouses and commercial production. Okay, tomatoes. Oh, all right. So you see that I already have um, my own variety that we've been saving for years called the Big Tasty Mater. I don't know what it is. It came out of a grocery store. Um, I have Dr. Weish for this year. Campari's are huge on production, but they're very small tomato, great for salads. If you don't like cherry tomatoes or you have a thing against that, or if you um, say you want to dry your tomatoes and do sun-dried tomatoes, Campari's are really good for that too. When I start seed, which will be very soon, um, I'm going to go for just a couple goals. So I want the Big Tasty Mater, even though they're a determinate variety, I want those for the spring. And then I want the Campari's to sun-dry them. Um, and probably salads too, but I also have the Everglades tomato and I have something called a Moby grape tomato that's going to be for salads. I will also uh, re-sow. I know I have them out here, but they may not last. They may kind of find the end of their life before they really need to. So I'm going to reduce Red Snapper, Jet Stars, Red Rosa Sicilian, which is... Um, more of a paste tomato, not necessarily known for its its um, texture. You know, doesn't that you don't want it for that, but it's fantastic for paste and uh, sauce. Um, and Aunt Molly's ground cherry. Okay, oh, that's my favorite. That is like candy in my garden. That's my favorite. So, um, anyhow, that is what I'm okay. The Dixie Red and the Grand Marshal. I might not have said this are known for heat. So I don't have to start those right away. I can wait for some of these other tomatoes to phase out and die out or whatever they want to do. And then I can trial and see how the Dixie Red and the Grand Marshals are. Now, I I don't know that my Grand Marshals made it through uh, transplanting and growing, whatever. If they are, they're covered up and I can't figure out which ones they are. But the Dixie Red have put on really nice six to eight ounce um, tomatoes and I love that that's really good and that's in cold and they're um, I believe hybrids designed for heat so we're going to try that again and we're just going to keep the tomatoes going when I want to can I'm actually going to go to Immokalee Florida and we're going to go buy cases of canning tomatoes and uh, we'll knock that out Jack and I Jack usually takes the week off and we do canning for the full week and uh, we put up stuff for the whole year. This is really just fun for eating fresh, giving away to friends. Um, sometimes we can, like I said, with the cucumbers and we make 
uh, pickles and I make um uh, what's that called um wickles you guys have you heard of wickles in the store so uh, I found a knockoff recipe on the internet and I follow that and that I do wickles relish and I do wickles pickles and my family absolutely loves them and they taste just like the store version okay next let's talk about um i forgot to mention it when we were talking about sweet potatoes but seminole pumpkins will be going out somewhere i'm not sure i just pollinated my first buttercup squash yesterday for spring and then um if we have room i may put the seminoles no, I wouldn't put them up there. I don't know. I'll put I'll put them somewhere. <laughs> so <coughs> I will put them somewhere in the backyard. Uh, sweet Anna butternut squash. Okay, that's great. Does great in in heat. It's a hybrid, and I saved the cross of their two F ones, so that makes this a F two hybrid. And so when all of the brassicas and stuff are, are gone in this garden, I will replace it with my South Anna butternut squash. That's where they go. They went there last year, and I'm just going to do it again. Um, I'm going to throw uh, rotation out the window. <laughs> okay, loofah. Let's not forget loofah because it was on this trellis, and it was on my front yard fence. And I have loofahs coming out my ears. Uh, some people have corn coming out their ears. I have loofah. I don't need any more loofah for like two years. So I thought it'd be a cool change to, I have tons of butterfly pea. And I thought, let's turn that whole front fence blue. And then I'll collect up the blooms and I will make a butterfly tea. I'll dehydrate that and save that for next winter's. Um, flu cold season whatever cold season when I'm just drinking it um, I think that's a gr my coming plan for this year okay um, okay we're still sticking with things that climb I have Alaska peas in here right now I just picked my first bunch this morning for like tonight's meal I have Alabama butter bean you saw me re sow that in a re very recent video so um Alabama butter bean will be up front. Lots and lots and lots of it. I also have scarlet runner bean up front. Uh, field peas. If, I don't know where I'll put them. I may put them when the lettuce phases out. I may put them up front here uh, in the south garden. And those were Queen Anne's black eyed peas. I don't know that my variety is more important than any other variety. But, you know, have at it. Also, I, I don't really need a lot of green beans, but um, because I already have canned from last year, I have like like a year's worth of left after eating them all year. Um, but I do like um, the green bush bean from Haas. It's sort of a non-named bean. It's just really general name. Uh, I like cannellini white bean. I like the slippery silk pink bean. Does great in 9B. Um, and black valentine so those are uh, the last three are all drying beans and they are all good the slippery silk be pink bean is great for like making refried beans and i love cannellini because i love white bean soup uh the black valentine is very good although that's sort of an older heirloom there might be new improved um hybrids or whatever you want to use uh if you find a good isn't there like a trail of tears or something like that i'm not really sure of the names i didn't come prepared with that information but um yeah black beans are great in zone 9b okay let's get to uh peppers and eggplants they're in the nightshades family along with the tomatoes um so i have already out there i have jimmy nardello is that right and um Big Mama, I have Sweet Banana Peppers, and, or was it Big Bertha? Big Mama, Big Bertha, I'll put it down below. And uh, I have Cherry Pick Hybrid Peppers, sweet, not hot. So those are hopefully going to make it through winter and be there. Now, the onions I'm predicting to come out about, they're in the same bed, they're coming out about April or May. 
and well, probably April. And um, then I plan on replacing them with my peppers. Now I'm not gonna start my peppers. Sometimes I start them as early as now and I just germinate them in the house and then bring them out. And, but the days are so short, they grow very slow. It's maybe not worth it, especially if you have other things that are priority, like your cucumbers and your, your peas and the cold things, um, or cooler things, uh, the preheat crops. So I like to give my peppers to mid February, late February. You have a little bit longer days. They won't suffer anything from having missed the extra month, six weeks, eight weeks in a tray. In fact, it might be better just to get them going as we start getting a little heat and a nice longer day. Um, so when I do that, it will be bullnose pepper. We grew those a couple years ago, maybe three years ago, had huge production on those. Um, Dak asked me to bring those back. Um, the Marconi, I always love the red Marconis. Uh, the Corbacci does okay here. Um, I'll probably have a couple just because they're pretty. I do like them when they're red. I don't like the, to eat them so much when they're green. But the flavor is fantastic red. That goes really for all peppers, you know. Um, I do every year, I think we're on our fourth or fifth year of Alma Paprika peppers and I grow those out they're just little orange things they grow them out um, we put the let's see what do we do first we smoke them first on the grill and usually mesquite and then I put them in the dehydrator and then I grind them and sometimes I have to re-dehydrate them if they didn't if they seem a little crumbly and not quite dry I re-dehydrate them after the first grinding and um, that is my my go-to. I put it on grits. I put it in all sorts of dinners, uh, dishes. You'll never have to buy paprika again. It's just what I do. Uh, and we're my whole family's so used to it. They don't even miss the store paprika anymore. Uh, cherry pick hybrids. We're going to keep going with those. Um, I feel like I didn't make the most of them last year. I mean, I have them all pickled, but I think I could have had better recipes. I could have done something different. And it could have been that some of them just, we didn't have the compost until fall. Um, the mushroom compost is what I use. And, you know, almost for the full year and a half or 20 months uh, for with COVID, I didn't have access to that. So I'm hoping all of my pepper, everything, I'm hoping everything will be so much better with the mushroom compost that was laid in the fall and will be laid uh, this coming spring. So we're gonna bring the nutrition back up in our gardens. Uh, eggplant, oh, Black Beauty is going fantastic. I have a plant that's a year and a half old over there that's a Black Beauty eggplant. Still going strong, still has blooms in January. I have more eggplant, uh, Black Beauty and Purple Shine this year in this garden, in the salsa garden, doing fantastic. I didn't quite realize how well the eggplant would do in zone 9B. I don't know if that's just because we had a mild winter or if it has always done that because I don't know that I've ever tried it in winter before like this. Um, I tried it one time in shade. It didn't work in the shade in the winter, but in the summer, pff, bonkers. Um, now I have a new one that I am going to try. The seeds are already ordered. They're coming in soon called Milan, Milanzana Rasa di Rotunda. And that's an eggplant that is, it's multicolored. It, like some of them come in yellowish and orangish and reddish. Not just your standard purple. And they are, um, they have a mixture of flavor of eggplant, tomato, and I, did they say pepper? Some sort of pepper. It just has like a, a whole different flavor and it sounded just fantastic. You know, the Italian in me was like, you got to buy it. So um, I have those seeds coming. W whenever they get here, I'll do a whole tray of um, them along with the tomatoes and stuff. Okay, I think I'm done with this page. 
Um, herbs. Let's talk about herbs. I have Genevieve's babe basil which is sweet basil up front i have persian basil in various spots some in the lettuce potager garden uh i have lettuce leaf basil which will be new to me that's also coming with the other new eggplant i'm really excited to try that basil um i have bouquet dill it's one of my favorites i use in zone 9b uh and i save seed i haven't bought seed in years um it's just great i here's a little tip I grow them now when the weather is right, and then I take off the heads. I save some heads for seeds, but then I take off the other heads, throw them right in the freezer. We save them for when we do dill pickles, and that way you don't have to. Have you ever tried looking for dill heads uh, in a grocery store? It, it's not impossible, but it's so rare, and so the best thing you do, can do is grow them now, throw them in a freezer ziploc bag or whatever and put them in there uh it sorry in there in my house put them in my house put them in your freezers and then just pull them out and pop them in the jar it's easy as that uh hercules carrot is my favorite i also have grown pusa acita but um and they go to bolt very quickly and they grow the little side hairy roots um i really like them for pollinators uh, they make too much of a mess in the house. They freak my husband out. He's not really into interesting looking food. <laughs> I have to just be honest there. If uh, th they won't eat it, then I probably just shouldn't grow it. I like the yellow carrots, but again, freaks the guys out in the house. It is what it is. Um, the Amarillo, uh, I think that came from Baker Creek. Uh, that was all wonderful. I love all those carrots. Um, do carrots now. I, uh, you still have time put some carrots in now you could you know make a big push now uh it, if you wait all the way to like april 1st i don't think you're gonna get some good you might get low germination but i don't think it's really good and your carrots won't be sweet either you want to do carrots in the winter when they're much sweeter cows okay so i love red russian kale red ursa kale narrow day toscana kale ragged jack is the same as red russian um i love all those kales i grow all those kales i have also done the blue curly scotch whatever kale i don't personally eat it um i give it to my animals it's really wonderful calcium and nutrition and everything for the bunny and the chickens um I didn't grow that this year. My GoPro keeps cutting out on me. I think it's kind of overly heated. Um, French breakfast radishes are my favorite, but all of them grow here in the winter. Let's get to watermelons. No, I'm not doing it. I have tried sugar babies. I've tried Georgia rattlesnake. Um, it's good. You need space. If you have space, go ahead and go for it. I don't. For the few that I eat, I'm just gonna go buy some at the store. Also, no cantaloupes. I'm not doing any orange pumpkins, but those little bitty ones that you buy, um, and, and like multiple colors and they're warty, bumpy and all that, they do actually grow pretty good here. But I find they like spring and they're never here in time for fall. Um, so no for that. I wanted to give you a little bit of advice. Some of you I see, trying to plant certain squash and pumpkin varieties um, in Florida. And I will just give you a head up that anything that is in the Mocata, M-O-C-H-A-T-A, or Mixta squash family, they do very well in Florida. Anything in the Pipo and Maxima uh, struggle, at least in the subtropical part. I don't know about the Panhandle. But I, because that sort of, you know, they have frost and all that stuff up there that we don't have. Um, but I'm just telling you, the Moshada and the mixed squash are great. The Pipo and the Maxima uh, don't do. The other thing we did not talk about was um, garlic. The other thing we didn't talk about was garlic. Uh, I did Pescadero Red and Salmon River um, garlic last year. They did okay. They didn't form the heads very well, you know, but the tops grew great. They grew and right on time. The flavor was good. Uh, I just didn't, I'm not putting any energy into garlic this year. Um, some people can do it. I have opted to just go by, 
not regular store garlic, but like uh, farmer's market garlic. And I dehydrated it and uh, dehydrated it and ground it all by my by myself. Oh, I did it all by myself. <laughs> um, yeah, I decided to just go to a farmer's market and I bought garlic there um, in large amounts when it was on sale and I dehydrated it and ground it and that's what I use it for. I, it's good if you can but I just didn't have a lot of luck with it. Leeks, I've done Kick King Richard and Sir Lancelot leeks. They're okay and um, you know they're heavy feeders. You do them with your uh, onions and I did them last year and we had wonderful leeks. Um, this year my leeks are a little bit smaller. They might not like where they're placed. Um, so no leeks really to say, to speak of, uh, for me. Um, I have some Sir Lancelots and that's it. Let's talk flowers. You saw all the sunflowers that I'm going to do. I have amaranth that's coming back this year. Cosmos, the Benary zinnias. Uh, I have a blue disc African daisy that I just bought a seed for. I'm really interested in trying that. Oh, and I've forgotten Orange Low Thyme. That's from Baker Creek. Toothache plant is coming. Um, and then I had, a, my friend Marilee gave me, and Steve gave me, um, Siso spinach cuttings. So I'm excited to introduce that into the food forest. And then I have something called a vine peach. And I, for the life of me, I can't even remember what it is. I know it comes from Baker Creek. And it looked interesting. So I went in on a seed packet uh, with my friends. So, let's see. I think that's it. Oh, I have... Oh, I didn't even talk about that. I have ginger and turmeric. And then my uh, friends also... They're more than friends. You hear me talk about Steve and Mary Lee all the time. They're my son's in-laws. And so... Um, yeah, so we're related, and uh, they have a nice one-acre food forest with and sheep and ducks and turkeys. They, they are really good homesteaders down there, and um, they've been kind enough to share some shampoo ginger with me as well as that sisso spinach. Um, so all that's going to be in the food forest, and I have mustard greens. Those are the Japanese red mustard gre greens, and then of course, like I said, the permaculture. But, um, and asparagus, the UC 157 F1 hybrid asparagus. I've already uh, taken my seeds that I saved from last year and I put them in dirt. They haven't come up yet. I'm not too worried. You know, we got a cold snap. Uh, so maybe in three weeks I'll have some bright ground and I'll get to show that to you. So that is all that I am growing. I hope I didn't forget anything. That is a lot. Um, pepperoncinis, I, I did forget to tell you. I have seed for pepperoncinis. I'm going to grow that. So, um, yeah, that's my garden. I'm sorry, sorry if this is a long video for you. But, um, yes, Clyde, my favorite guide. Um, that I really like the Better Hens and Garden idea. Uh, I just haven't got it all set up in time. Um, and that'll take me a little while to get it going. Um, yeah, that's what we're doing. So I hope you guys let me know in the comments below if you're growing any of the same things or if you're uh, really excited about a different variety and um, can recommend it to the other people. I mean, maybe people are looking in the comments and you can help recommend something for them in their zone. I know I have people in other zones uh, compared to nine, you know, mine and 9B, so maybe you can be helpful for them. It's things I can't help people with. So you guys take care. God bless. I'm sorry it's so long, but uh, I love you and I hope this answered a lot of questions. Bye.